Well, uh, he had the habit that when he was writing a book, he always spent a good time in the very place, country, where the book was going to be set. And as far as the Manxman was concerned, of course, it was the Isle of Man. But he came to live in Griba Castle because T. E. Brown knew that he was looking for a place in the island where he could write his book. And he suggested this place to him. So it was through T. E. Brown that he became a tenant of Mrs. Windows. And it was on the strings of his income from the Manxman that he felt that he could buy Griba Castle. When Hall Kane's bid for it was, which was 1,250, I think, came up, the, the uh, judge sort of said, oh, that was a miserable sum or something like that. And the architect, the Manx architect, Cowell, stood up and said it was much more than the place was worth in its present condition. Yes, he changed several features about it. He changed the entrance to the place. As you know, this is built on a very steep slope indeed. Uh, the entrance was what is now the side of the house, and uh, you have come in through the present entrance, which in some respects is on, on, on the former side of the house. When he was coming up to full age, 21 years old, um, there was anxiety. And as he had been such a friend of Rossetti's and moved in the, those circles for several years, it was quite natural that he wanted features. He had uh, William Morris wallpapers on the walls. He had quite a few pieces of furniture from his time with Rossetti. Some he inherited and some he bought from, uh, from uh, the family after Rossetti died. But there were lots of, of things. And as I have mentioned earlier to you, there was this imposing <coughs> fireplace that had belonged to George Eliot that he had been given and uh, that was installed here in Griba Castle. On the beam here, the big oak beam, Hall Kane himself yeah. put what he meant to be the motto for the house. It's a Shakespeare quotation. Well, he simply carved, here you shall see no enemies, but winter and rough weather. And then he put the year 1897, which was the year when the house was habitable. <laughs>